Uh, right, Malachi Rourke, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, Jer. Morning, Shea. Morning, Shea. Malachi, how are things? Why good. can't Why can't you push up on a kick out all the time? <laughs> uh, well, you can if you if you if you go that way, you can push up on it. Uh, there's obviously risks with that as well, and that I suppose the, the biggest problem is the, the teams are sometimes. Uh, a wee bit unwilling to do that because somebody with a long kick out can bypass so many players and particularly now a lot of teams are, are flooding a lot of players into the defensive zone for kick outs so if you push everybody up if you go man to man on that for example you could be pushing maybe 12 players up there if the ball is kicked right across that that uh, that all those players you're leaving yourself very open at the back. You're leaving yourself completely exposed. Uh, and that's probably the biggest reason. And it, it is it, it is a very difficult thing to, to actually get that right, to get pushed up all the time. And it takes a lot of practice, believe it or not, just to, to get, get those those things fine-tuned. Because if you have one or two fellas who aren't completely in sync, um, you know, the, the goalkeeper can get away. Anyway. So it, it's, it's, it's not just as easy probably as just saying push up on every kick out. And so when we're seeing matches like the two at the weekend where it feels like there's a particular moment when Dublin and Kerry both decide that this is going to be, we're going to be very aggressive on the opposition kickout. How does that happen? Is that like an in-game decision? Is it pre-planned last 10 minutes we're going to do this? What What's behind that? One of the one of the big things there was when they 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 are awarded free kick. When the, when the team is awarded free kick, it gives players time to get organised and to get into the in the shape they want. Because the free kick the free kick has to be taken. Then there's a a, a lapse in time as was when it when it's scored by the time the goalkeeper gets the ball set up and so on. And so you can have your your players in position in in open play if the ball goes wide. Obviously, you know the the keeper can get the ball straight away on the tee and and away before people are set up. So sometimes, if you if you push too hard in that case, you're sort of wasting energy. You're getting up on the, and the ball is going to get away to a free man anyway. So it's just picking your times and and I suppose then there are at times teams will decide on, at a particular stage in the game to to put on an aggressive press and and, and I suppose take a chance in a way. So that's the parallel between the two games at the weekend where there's the Stephen O'Brien free that uh, Kerry kick and take a period of time over that. Sean O'Shea takes his time, kicks it over the bar and then uh, everybody pushes forward for Kerry. It's the Mannion free the day before against Monaghan. Uh, Dublin press after that and that's the turning of both those games where there's two or three scores in a couple of minutes that puts the daylight between the two winners. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that, I suppose it, it gave them at that stage of the game, it, it, it gave them that chance to, to set up like that. I suppose there's, there's something to do with a teams getting a wee bit uh, tired at that stage, a wee bit of mental fatigue, I suppose, sets in and things like that there. So it's a combination of things, but there's no doubt it's that it's it's the, the time that the free kick gives you time to set up and get your structure in place to make it really difficult then for the for the opposition to, to get the kick away or, or, or players to get into space to get a get a, a short one away so that's that's probably the biggest factor in that and is there a decision made on the pitch that we're going to do it at this particular time or is it predetermined in your experience generally if there is a free kick we're going to push on the back of that free kick irrespective of what period of the game that happens no, not not again. Not really. Um, it, it, it depends on a number of things. It depends, I suppose, what the score is at a particular time. If you need to push up, if you need to be aggressive to try and get a score or two, if the game is 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 evenly poised, if you're five or six points ahead, there, there's there's no need to do that. You know, you 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 can sort of uh, be more aware of, of keeping you the structure nice and, and and tight if they do get the ball and and. Uh, so there, there, there's a number of variations come into that, and um, but but at, at times as well, it will be just up to the players. You know, I did. I, it was very noticeable towards the end of the the Monon Dublin game that it was, it was uh, I was sort of in, in line with where Brian Fenton, James McCarthy, Kieran Kilkenny, and those boys were taking responsibility themselves for for actually where they were positioning themselves. So that was it was obviously very good sort of in game management by those experienced players uh, dictated a lot of what was going on towards the end. I felt could Mullen have done anything differently in that last five ten period, Malachi? Do you think? Um, I suppose the, the one thing that stood out for me again, and I, I, I suppose it partly do it with Mullen, but more so with Dublin. And how many times over the last number of years have we seen Dublin? 
um, in that last 10 minute period just their game management their decision making everything else is so good I think in that last period last quarter possibly I think Dublin got maybe 11 shots away Monon maybe got 3 you know so Dublin had an awful lot of possession of the ball but as well as that just the leadership they have there the amount of times those players have been in that position before and that that is really really crucial you know they're able to stay calm and I suppose that that's what often happens when, when the teams see the finish line it's more so uh, maybe teams going out of what they're normally doing whereas Dublin can stay in Dublin's as I said their decision making their composure and everything else the, the, the if anything they just go up a level and I thought they really controlled the game well in, in that period and they they again their their shooting efficiency was very good. I think they something they'll maybe did they get six out of eight from play or something like that. Now Mullins wasn't bad either. I think Mullins but but again Mullins had, had a lot less of the ball and had only maybe two shots or something like that from play. So uh, no again could Monon have, have kept the ball better? Could they have worked something better for, for kickouts? I suppose that's the that's the, the areas that they'll be looking at and they'll be sort of feeling that they could have done better than that. Also, and I heard Vinny uh, reference it after the game, they actually, when they had the ball, they turned it over a lot and it, it gave Dublin that oxygen, whereas Dublin didn't really do that. Dublin were, were very efficient in that last 10-minute last period. Conor McManus was obviously brilliant um, and like the hope I guess for Monon supporters is that he stays on for at least another year but um, Anthony Miles was making the point yesterday that he would have held off from McManus until I guess the 40-45 minute mark when, when he's been kind of taken off the bench for a lot of games this season would you go along with that? I guess it's, it's hard in hindsight to say it but would you have started McManus I guess? Uh, that's a, I suppose It is a tricky one in that he did so well coming on in the other games and the uh, I'm saying that I can, I can see why he was playing so well and I suppose it was a case that the, the most important thing I suppose was that the boys were still in the game at half time the, the, the game was very much alive um, and I, I, I presume they just felt that, that he was going well that you know the, the wanted they felt that the, he, he had that threat in the full forward line that would cause Dublin problems and that he would enable them to be in a good position at half time in a good position with, with, with 50 minutes left and that certainly worked you know so I, I don't think it was and he finished the game very strong as well you know so um, I, I, I can see why they did it and I, I don't see that it, it, it cost them the game or anything like that you know it it, it, uh, it Worked fairly well, and it, it was noticeable that that uh, you know the the, the start a number of more experienced players, and it, it certainly did give them a good foothold in the game. Yeah, three point lead at half time and still in the game, sixty eight minutes. I think it's hard to second guess any of the decision making in in terms of the selection because it, it certainly seems to have worked. Um, it, it just in, in terms of the the trends of the games that we're seeing at the moment because we're at the very end of the season now. There's only one significant game left for us to look back on. Um, did we see an evolution like even in Derry being so attacking and uh, Monaghan in that first half trying to take in the game to Dublin maybe could have even taken it a bit more with the amount of possession they had is there a, a slight swing back of the pendulum however slightly towards a more direct attacking style yeah possibly is and I suppose that was very evident at the weekend but again I think that it's possibly as well that the team's maybe do feel that when you go to Crow Park you have to be more expansive that 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 a uh, sort of deep defending game and hoping to beat teams by frustrating them and then attacking sporadically I suppose but efficiently um, I, I don't think that's going to work I think you know there will usually the games in Crook Park will usually be won by team scoring 118 218 you know that and I think you have to give yourself the chance to, to be able to do that and, and you can only do that by keeping forwards up the field by attacking you know with, with, with good efficiency and that sort of thing so I think that is possibly part of that as well I think the goalkeepers as well you know, it was, it was interesting. You know, with with Mon in the first half and and and, and Derry as well. Um, the the thing about the goalkeeper coming out with Rory coming out in the first half for Monin, it means that particularly the way Cluxon plays, Cluxon stays in his lane. He doesn't really come out. So it meant that every time Monin attacked in the first half, they had next demand. You know, so they said fifteen attacking fourteen all night. 
And then, you know, rather than Dublin couldn't go man to man out the field, and it meant then that if if a player was running into trouble, all they had to do was knock the ball back to Rory, who was the who was the outlet, and then they were able to keep possession. So it is it's it's a harder thing for a team to defend against. And then Monan kept the ball well, didn't didn't rush rush things, didn't didn't sort of uh, go into crowded areas, and then the runners were coming from deep, and that's that's where they created a couple of goal chances from and things like that. So I thought I thought Monan uh, kept the ball well and, and and worked their scores, and I think that is a, you know you saw with, with Derry the next day as well that Lynch was on so much ball, and again a lot of the times he's not been marked obviously because there's no no direct marker for him, and it, it gave him. The, the time and space to get into into areas and then lay the ball off he had a couple of sh- uh, chances of seven, so, but that certainly is making a big difference So we, we we live in a copycat world can we expect this now to become a thing? Well I suppose I suppose the, the champions often often uh, Define the next trend in the game, and I suppose if Dublin win and 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 Cluxton isn't coming out, he doesn't stay much further than I suppose you know twenty thirty meters out from goal. Again, it'll it'll go back to well, look at the goalkeeper coming out like that isn't needed, but certainly you can see the benefits of it. Um, you know the the the, the both Derry like even even the 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 goal that Derry got at the start. If you actually watch that move back. Orn Lynch came up that that wing. There's actually two Derry players being man marked, if you like. One of them left McKinless and went to Orn Lynch. Orn Lynch was then able to pop the ball off to McKinless, who then had a had a sort of a free run in, in on the goals. He he popped it off to Brett Rogers on a supporter run. He took the initial shot and then McKinless put it in. But it just showed you in a very small Way it just showed you how that extra man coming out, the goalkeeper can actually work and can disrupt defences. And I suppose the, the way te- a lot of teams are setting up with so many players back, that's what you're looking to do. You're looking to get the wee areas where you can get mismatches or overloads and things like that. And that that's, gives you the wee bit of space to operate in. It doesn't sound like you think there should be uh, radical changes to the rules to save the game, which apparently is dying, even though we've just witnessed two amazing semi finals. Yeah. Well, I suppose all I'm saying, I, I'm just looking at, at what I can actually see happen and I can see the, the benefits of it. Whether it's actually helping the game as a spectacle, that's that's a completely different matter. And, you know, it it, it, it probably is. It, it it means, for example, what I was saying there, it means that in other times, the likes of Dublin could press up and really put pressure on that middle third and then they got the you know the good were able to break away and get scores and it, it left. Whereas now they are very conscious of that as well. They are very conscious that if the if the push up really aggressively, you know, at, at times out there, the ball will be slipped and, and somebody will be away. So so they have to be really careful. Uh, whether it's actually, as I say, improving the game as a spectacle, that that's hard to know. Certainly throughout the year, you know, there's a lot of games. There's a, a lot of ball being being. I mean, just the possession was being kept and, and teams were right back and it was an awful lot of probing before anything really happened. And so, look at it, it, it the thing about changing the rules, the, 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 the people who are over teams are always looking, obviously, to see, well, how do we get round this? What's the best way? If they're not, they're not necessarily, when you're in that environment, you're not necessarily looking to, to, to make the game as attractive as, as you can. You're more trying to be effective as a coach and trying to think right well, how do we uh, work things to our own benefit here you know so no I I, I would agree that I, I do think that if, if you want to make the game more attractive certainly you know th- there has to be maybe a couple of tweaks alright okay that was brilliant thanks a million for joining us cheers no problem at all boys